Okay, hey guys, welcome to the for sale by owner uh, class. So today we're going to be going over um, how to prospect for sale by owners, and so let's get started. So, uh, a for sale by owner is a seller who is trying to sell without the services of a real estate agent, right? We've all seen the for sale by owner signs out there, and um, we typically know what they are, but just in case. You don't, it's anybody who's trying to sell without a real estate agent. Um, so how do we find these for sale by owners? And we're going to, by the end of this class, I'm going to give you a full plan on how to work with uh, a plan on uh, for sale by owners. But how do we find them? Well, I still think one of the best ways is just by driving around the neighborhoods. So when we prospect for sale by owners, we're going to want to um, be visiting with them weekly. And so you want to find people that are close to your house, close to your office or um, areas that you typically drive by anyway. So by driving around neighborhoods, then uh, that'd be a little bit easier and you can just write those down. Um, listen to what people are saying. Somebody says they're uh, selling by owner. Uh, that can still be a good way to find people. Certainly classified ads. Anybody who's got classifieds in the newspaper or online newspaper could be a good way to, to find some. Uh, and of course, then the websites for sale by owner.com, fisbo.com, by owner.com, uh, Zillow, Craigslist, uh, any of these websites are, are good places to find for sale by owners. All right. But again, I would still look at driving around some neighborhoods to, to find some of the ones nearest to where you live. All right. Here's some for sale by owner facts. Most for sale by owners see self-selling as an easy task. They think it's easy. They think they're not going to have any problems. There's no safety issues. There's no showing issues. I know how to negotiate. There's no problems. There's no emotions involved, right? So um, that's what they think, though. They think it's going to be an easy task. Uh, most for sale by owners eventually will list with a real estate company. The percentage that NAR puts out is 78%. 78% of all for sale by owners will actually list with a real estate agent. And you might be thinking, well, yeah, okay, Aaron, but in 2020, um, that's got to be different than what it's been in the past. And what we found is that NAR statistics are showing now more than ever, people are using a real estate agent more than they were in the 80s, more than they, more than they were in the 90s, and then uh, even more than what they were using in the 2000s. So uh, we're seeing it, it work. Um, people are using real estate agents at uh, the highest rate of all time. So you might think with technology, uh, the media wants you to think that real estate agents are kind of being pushed out of the business. It's statistically not true at all. In fact, it's the opposite. And I think part of that is people are more uh, educated and they can go online and figure out, oh, this isn't as easy as I thought it was. And so they are actually using real estate agents at um, higher levels. Um, another thing I like to say about that is you only hear from the for sale by owners that had a good experience, right? On social media, nobody ever tells you their horrible experience or why they were so stupid on selling by owner or why they made such a bad mistake. You're never going to hear about that. You're only going to hear about the good situations where somebody had a nice, clean uh, transaction and then they go on social media and everywhere else advertising how they had such a great um, experience but again that's only the the smaller percentage um, and there's plenty of other stories that I've heard out there where for sale by owners get in a whole lot of trouble um, financially legally etc by trying to sell by owner and certainly the frustrations can mount for them all right another thing that you need to know on for sale by owners it takes an average of five to seven contacts to list the for sale by owner. Why? Well, because the average for sale by owner stays that way for about 60 days. So when somebody puts that sign in the yard, the average is about 60 days. They're willing to try by owner before they will list with a real estate agent. All right. So it means we have to keep going back time after time after time. Five to seven contacts is what it typically takes. So when you go out, you knock on the door and you get sort of an icy uh, conversation with them the first time. Don't think it's over because it's not. You got to keep going back uh, time and time again until you get to that seventh, tenth, twelfth contact with that for sale by owner. 
the idea here is that you need to be there when their heart breaks. All right. You need to be there when they give up on trying to sell for sale by owner. So that it's a consistent porting relationship that you're, you're with them day in, day out uh, until they list with you, list with someone else, or maybe they do sell it themselves. OK. And before I move on, let me just talk about that. Let's say they do sell the house themselves. Is that a bad thing? Uh, no, no, it's not. And they do sell it themselves, but you've been there helping them out for the last couple of months, couple of weeks. Uh, then you, you're in a great position to congratulate them and then ask them for referrals. Um, on you know, They have friends and family that have told them, oh, you're selling by owner. That's good for you. But man, I could never do that. Well, wouldn't you like to know who those people are? So um, by being their friend and helping them out during the situation, even if they do sell it themselves, um, that's great. And you can use them as a new sphere of influence contact. Okay. All right. So why do they self sell? Why do they sell by owner? Well, I think the number one reason is the brokerage fee. They, they want to save money. And another NAR statistic shows that when people sell by owner, they actually lose money. It's a national statistic that that's true. So when people say, well, yeah, but I saved the brokerage fee, statistically, they didn't. Uh, maybe one case, they, you know, they did better. Other case, maybe they lost money. Uh, but overall, the, the annual, uh, I'm sorry, the national average is that they actually lose money by selling for sale by owner. Well, why is that? Well, partly because they, they fully admit they're selling by owner, so they're saving the brokerage fee. So what do you think the buyer wants to do? Save the brokerage fee. So it's like, you know, you, you're selling something at 6% less because you're saving, quote unquote, the brokerage fee. But all you've really done is do all the work and end up at the same price. So oftentimes the buyers want to save that brokerage fee as well. So the seller doesn't actually net any more money, which is one of the things you want to do when you're um, discussing with a for sale by owner why they should pay you a fee because their net would actually be more and not to mention the frustration and the pain and and all those good things um, the other reason why they actually lose money is they're not exposing themselves to the whole market uh, the example i like to use is if you're going to an auction and at that auction there were four people how well is that auction going to go Probably not very well because there's only a few people involved and they only have so much money to spend and shoot. They can look around the room and say, hey, you bid on that one. I'll bid on this one. And the auction is not going to go very well. But what happens if there's 400 people in that audience or 4000? The larger the audience, the better the auction. It's the same thing for real estate. So if they put that sign in the yard, OK, some people driving by see the sign. They might talk to them. They might call on them. But is that market really being exposed to the whole market? No. So that's where uh, um, by selling with a real estate agent and good marketing, they can actually net more money. All right. So that is their number one reason. And it's uh, completely statistically proven to be a mistake if that's their reason to save the brokerage fee. All right. Number two, their distrust of real estate agents. So unfortunately, we all have to deal with the um, the reputation of every real estate agent out there. So when somebody spurns a client, we all sort of suffer as real estate agents. So they might have very good reasons for distrusting agents because of an experience in the past. And you have to be, have compassion on them about that. And you have to show them that not all real estate agents are the same. Um, so you do have to understand that, though, when they do have that icy exterior the first time you talk to them, um, it, it's, it's really not about you. It's just about the license that you have. And so just understand that and know that you're going to have to build that trust back up that might have been broken by uh, another agent. And the number one thing I like to do when I hear that or feel that from someone, I just say to them, uh, man, I'm so sorry you had that experience. I know that that sucks. I, some real estate agents just are really, uh, really poor representation of the rest of us. I'm so sorry you had that experience. So don't try to defend it. Don't try to. You know, you know, immediately just defend the position, uh, but rather just show them some compassion and, and understanding of why they feel that way and 
uh, give them some some creditation to why they, they, they have a right to feel distrust of real estate agents. Um, so by doing that, you, you can befriend them typically a little bit easier. All right. Um, the other reason is lack of motivation. They don't they're, they're not really super motivated to purchase the property or I'm sorry to sell the property. So uh, they just feel like I'll put a sign in the yard, see what happens. That can be the that can be um, a situation sometimes. Uh, they just had a bad experience in the past. Again, maybe distrust of agents or just a bad experience in general, and they just feel like they can control things more if they go for sale by owner. Um, and then ego is a big reason. Um, there's a lot of people out there that just feel like, I think it's maybe a combination of all of these things, but they just feel like they can do it and they're smarter than um, the average real estate agent and they can uh, do a better job. So sometimes ego is the reason, all right? Um, trading time for value. As a for sale by owner, how much time are they going to have to spend on this? And they might say, well, not very much. Well, okay. But then every time somebody wants to see the house, what do they have to do? They have to be there. Right? So what if they're, if they have a normal job and they're working nine to five, when are they showing the house? At dinner time, early mornings, evenings, uh, weekends, like when, when are they having to show the house? So that, that's a, that's a big issue that you need to discuss with them. Safety is another huge issue. Um, you know, you gotta be careful on how you bring this up to sellers, but in all honesty, if you're for sale by owner and somebody randomly sees your sign and they call you and says, yeah, I'd like to come see your house. And you let them in your home, shut the door behind you, and you bring them down into the basement. How safe is that? I mean, honestly, right? So we, we got to remind them of some potential safety issues there. At least when you list with a real estate agent, we have a, a good lockbox that has timed entrances to it. And we know exactly who was in the house and when. And um, everybody who has access to that has been through a background check. So not only do we know who they are, but uh, their career's on the line, their license is on the line, and uh, they have a background check. And, and then, of course, the as the seller yourself, you don't have to be there. In fact, we don't want you there, right? So it's much, much safer to list with a real estate agent as well. But their time is extremely important, uh, as, as everybody. So trading time for value. All right. Um, oh, let me go back here just a second. So one of the things we're going to do is we're going to continue show value to them throughout the whole process. So we're going to be sharing tips and encouraging them to sell by owner. And that seems counterproductive, but it's really not. We want to keep encouraging them to sell by owner until they realize, well, maybe they, they could just utilize your services instead. Talk more about that in a minute. But what things do we not give away? All right. So, um, again, we're show, sharing some tips and things like that. Things we would give away would be ideas about, hey, how to do an open house. You guys want to do an open house? Well, no. Isn't that what real estate agents do? Well, yeah, but that's certainly something I do. and I do a great job. I do a Wikert open house and, and do everything the right way. But, um, you know, here's some tips and some ideas on how you can do an open house as a for sale by owner. And feel free to share all that kind of stuff. Why? Because, first of all, they're not going to do it. Uh, even if they do, great. They'll be thankful to you for um, helping them out through that process. Um, but those kind of things, we can share with them information about the local market. We can share with them how to stage the home correctly, maybe give them some tips on uh, and ideas on uh, how to uh, stage things up correctly. Uh, but what services should we not give away? The one thing we should not ever give a for sale by owner is pricing information. Uh, we shouldn't do it unless they're willing to listen to my full marketing presentation. Okay. So the way, the way that works is if you're talking with a for sale by owner and they say, um, well, what do you think about the price? And then I would say something to the effect of, well, you know, um, in looking at the property, I'd have to do a full price trend analysis or PTA on your property so that I could truly give you an accurate answer to that. I'm more than happy to do that, um, but I, I'm only going to put in that effort and that work if you're willing to listen to my marketing plan. Um, not that you have to list with me, but I'm happy to put forth that effort, but it'll take me a couple hours to 
get the pricing information together for you. And um, if you'd like to take a look at that, I'm happy to do that. But then part of that pricing is the marketing that I'm going to do for you. So uh, I need to show you what my marketing plan is. If you're willing to listen to my marketing plan, I'll do the work and share with you my pricing info. So it gives you a listing appointment, right? And sometimes I say, well, I don't want you to do that. I'm not, I'm not re really willing to list right now. I would still rebut that by saying, no problem. I'm still just happy to share with you what I would do. And you can take whatever ideas marketing wise that I show you and um, steal them and use them for yourself. And hopefully you can sell by yourself. But should the time come when you decide not to and you'd like to speak with an agent, well, you've already seen my marketing plan and uh, you can give me a call and we'll get going. So. I think by, by not giving it away, it gives you the great opportunity to, to grab that listing appointment because most of the time when you do a full doors listing presentation for them, they're going to be so blown away by the marketing and the differences and the education and uh, experience that you're going to bring them that they're not going to want to sell it by owner anymore. Uh, and, and, and certainly maybe if, if it doesn't work immediately, it will work in a couple of weeks when they finally do get tired of it. OK, so that's the one thing we never give away is the actual pricing information. All right. So what questions do we want to ask a for sale by owner? Number one, why are you selling? Where are you moving? How soon do you need to get there? How did you determine the price? How long have you had the home for sale? So let's talk about these questions. Why are you selling? That's a question to ask anybody who's selling. Right. So what's up? What, why are we doing this? Why are we selling? Um, of course, they probably shouldn't answer that, honestly, if they're for sale by owner and, and, and you might have a buyer for them. They probably shouldn't answer that, but find out why they're selling so that that would help you understand uh, what their motivations are and kind of maybe where their future pain points might be in a few weeks if, uh, if they're not getting to what they were trying to get accomplished. We want to ask, where are you moving to? Why? Well, maybe we can work with them as a buyer's agent. Maybe they're moving just across town and they say, well, we just need a bigger place and we're looking to move across town. Well, great. You can work with them on that. What if they're moving across the country? Well, maybe you can help them uh, hook them up with a referral, uh, find a good Wikert office wherever they're moving and uh, set up a referral to that office. Uh, so you can help them out that way. How soon do you need to get there? Key question, because it's sort of an innocent question, right? How soon do you need to be there? And they say, oh, you know, in, in two months, I start my new job. That's really when I need to get there. Okay, two months. And you know, come about one month from now, they're going to be getting desperate to get that sold, right? So whatever they say, um, that's something you put in your back pocket and, and know that you have that as some leverage should you need it in the future. How did you determine the price? Excellent question to ask. Um, I'm always amazed at the answers there. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Uh, sometimes you'll talk to a for sale by owner and you say, how do you determine the price? And they'll throw out graphs and charts and more research than I've ever done ever in my life. And I'm blown away and say, wow, that's pretty impressive. Uh, but that's not most of the time, right? Most of the time when you say, how did you determine the price? They'll come out with, well, I looked on Zillow and the Zestimate showed me X. Uh, or I looked on my tax records and the tax records said X, so that's what I'm using. Um, as you all know, we, we can't use those as price. Those are not um, accurate ways to come up with the price of the home. And really the worst thing they can say is, well, my neighbor sold for X and so I'm selling for X. And uh, it may be, a, you know, if it's cookie cutter neighborhood, same features, same updates, maybe that's decent way to find the price, but often it's not. So um, asking how they determine the price and then just kind of, <laughs> I like to, to do a little kind of pause and just making them think a little bit. They say, well, I, you know, I look at the tax records and I say, oh, okay. And see what they say. Uh, sometimes they're like, oh, is that not right? And it's like, oh, that's not how I would do it, but you know, okay, that that's fine. That's, that's what you did. And just kind of get them thinking, well, well, how would you price the house? And then you get right back to where we were right here. Um, well, you know, I'm something I'm happy to do for you, et cetera. And you're just going to have to listen to my marketing presentation. How long have you had the home for sale? Again, they're going to be for sale uh, by owner between five and seven weeks, sometimes more, 
sometimes less, uh, but that's the average. So if we know, if, you, if you're talking to them the first time and they say, I've been on the market for four weeks now, ooh, you know you, they probably only have a month left statistically. So it, it really helps to understand where you are, all right? Ask them some thought-provoking questions. Have you done regular open houses? Open houses? No, that's something realtors do. Well, yes, that's something that, that uh, we do as Weikert agents. We certainly do a lot of open houses, but it's something you can do as well as a for sale by owner. And then there, you give them some tips on how to do open houses. Again, help them the whole time. Help them. Act as if you don't want to list the house. Okay. Again, it is a courting relationship. So the last thing you want to do is seem desperate or be over anxious about it. Um, you're there to just help them. All right. So how much activity? have you had well you know I, I keep getting a lot of calls but i'm never available to show them the house oh <laughs> you know at, you know making the point that uh, oh well maybe you know you need you need some assistance on just getting the showings done um but just see how much activity they've had number three other than listing the property online what else have you done to promote it finding out what they're doing to advertise their property most of the time it's a for sale by owner sign in the yard maybe putting it up on Craigslist or Zillow, something like that, but that's typically it. Um, however, if they have some sort of large, robust social media platform and they're getting all these leads and stuff, and I mean, maybe they're doing a good job advertising, but uh, the one thing they can't do is get it on the multiple listing service, which of course is the number one way to expose the property to buyers. All right, number four, um, are you familiar with your competition? Well, what is that? Well, do you know who else is for sale in the neighborhood? Well, I know Joe's house down the road there, you know, and they, they might have one or two of them down, um, but they, they probably don't know everything that's for sale um, in their area or in their neighborhood. And so that's something you should be able to help with. Number five, are you pre-qualifying buyers? I honestly have not heard of for sale by owner that once said yes to that. Um, there may be somebody out there that, has but uh, most of the time they don't even know what it is or they say well i'm just assuming that they're qualified that's usually the answer that i hear and so as real estate agents we know how important that is to qualify the buyers and make sure they're not uh, you know just talk to xyz.com lender that uh, said they can buy the house and we know very well that that online lender isn't very uh, trustworthy and we don't know really what what's going to happen with that buyer so making sure that they they have full knowledge of um, what's going on with the um, the buyers and, and the qualifications number six is there always someone home to show the house right and again sometimes on retired people or something like that sometimes there is but most of the time people are working or they have other obligations and they just can't be at the house all the time which of course makes it harder to show the house. And then like we said earlier, there is of course a, a major safety issue when doing that. All right, resolving for sale by owner objections. An objection is a customer's hesitation that impedes progress. So they say, um, you know, I, I don't wanna list with a real estate agent because I don't wanna pay the 6% commission, right? That's something you should expect them to say. Um, so they're normal and expected. If you're not expecting the objection, then that's on you. Because when you go to for sale by owner, just like this image here, the guy's got one hand raised saying, I want to sell my house. And the other hand is doing this saying, stop. I don't want to work with you. So you should expect some ice between you and them the first time you talk to them. And again, that gets better and better as you keep talking, keep trying to be helpful, keep trying to befriend them. Yeah, it, it helps out a lot. Um, so again, it should be normal and expected. Um, the acronym that we use with our office from David Knox is PAID, pause, acknowledge, isolate, and discover, right? Um, so we should pause when they say, um, I don't want to pay 6% commission. We just pause, see if they say something else, or they say, but, you know, maybe I would work with a realtor. Oh, great. You know, again, with a for sale by owner, it's not usually going to happen, but you say, you just pause. At some point, then you need to acknowledge the objection. Just a simple, okay, well, I understand that. You don't want to pay 6%. Maybe repeat the question back to them, okay. But then it gets back to isolating the objection. 
So it's hard to do this. You don't want to do this on the first discussion unless it's a long conversation maybe, but uh, the isolate the objection means other than paying me the 6%, which by the way, I'm only making 3% of that, which my broker takes a percentage of that, Weikert takes a percentage, and so I'm really left with this, right? So you kind of show them where the money really is there. Um, so, but other than paying me the commission, how would you feel about working with me? Now, that's the question I always want to ask on a commission objection after a doors presentation. So that's why I'm saying, like, you don't really want to get there yet until they give you a chance to do the listing presentation so you can, they can see what you're doing, right? So you can, you've already shown value. Now you can handle the objection or I'm sorry, isolate the objection uh, by saying, other than the commission, do you feel like I'm the best real estate agent for the job? And if they say yes, okay, now we can handle the objection. But if they say no, Joe down the street's a better agent than you are, I would list with him. Okay, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to leave now. <laughs> okay, because obviously if that's the case, then who cares? Why are we wasting our breath talking to them? If, if you haven't proven your value and they say to your face, no, I would list with so-and-so over you, then we're done here. It's okay. It's not the end of the world. We'll move on to the next one, but we're done here, okay? Because if, if that's the case, I'm certainly not talking about commission with somebody who says, I'm not going to list with you anyway, even if I would agree to the commission, all right? So that's how we handle really all objections. We gotta isolate the issue to find out, to put that in another context, you're working with a buyer and the buyer says, um, other than, or I mean, the buyer says, I don't like the size of the bedrooms of this house. And you say, other than the size of the bedrooms, how do you feel about the house? And they say, well, I don't like the driveway. Other than the bedrooms in the driveway, how do you like the house? Well, I don't like the color of the kitchen. So other than the driveway, uh, the bedroom size, color of the kitchen, what don't you like about the house? I don't like it doesn't have a deck. Okay, like you see the point? Like at some point, you're just not buying the house, right? But if they say, I don't like the size of the bedrooms, and say, other than that, how do you feel about the house? And they say, I would want to buy this if we could figure that out. Okay, now we've isolated that, and now we want to try to handle it. So the same thing with the for sale by owner. You got to get to that point where you can isolate that objection. If they're objecting to two, three, five, ten things, there's no point in answering any one of them. Okay, so that's what we're trying to get to there. All right, you want to handle those objections and then close again for the agreement. And to me, handling objections before doing a doors presentation is hard to impossible. So the way I would handle the objection would be, well, I tell you what. Let me get my full marketing presentation together, a full pricing presentation together. I'm willing to commit that time and effort to show you what my value would be for you. Would you agree to meet with me and do that? How about tomorrow at three o'clock and see what they say? That's how I would handle the objection is closing for the doors. After doors, then it's isolating the objection and you have to show that value and then close again for the agreement. Okay. Okay, so quick summary, quick summary before we, we move on to my prospecting plan. For sale by owners or a courting relationship, you have to continue to go by and talk with them weekly. And yes, I said go by. I said drive to them, get out of your car, ring the doorbell and say hello. Okay, so that's what, I, that's what you're supposed to do, not just call. Now, if you've got a good relationship with them and one week you want to call them instead of going by, okay, but you're never going to convince me that um, you're better off over the phone than you are going in person. The only way you're going to get them to list with you is if they learn to like you and trust you. And the whole point really of being on the phone with them is to get that face-to-face -face appointment. So why not just go face-to-face, -face, right? So um, going face-to-face -face weekly until they actually sell. So here's my FISBO prospecting plan. This is what I recommend our agents do. This is what I did as a for sale by owner and for sale by owner and expired prospecting was my baby. That's how I picked up business as a new agent and what I focused on prospecting wise. And this is what I learned to do. I started by picking three for sale by owners to work with. 
locate them, and then visit them the first time. Visit them once a week until they list with you, list with someone else, or sell the home themselves. Okay? So that means every week you're visiting with them until they list with you. God forbid they list with someone else, but it will happen. And sometimes they sell themselves, which, again, isn't a bad thing. It really isn't. You congratulate them. Oh, that's so wonderful. By the way, who do you know of all the people you do know? Who would be the most willing to list with me now that you've gotten to know me and somebody who doesn't have the gumption that you did to sell for sale by owner? Who would list with me? So ask them. Get referrals out of it. Don't give up on them. Remember, it's going to be five to seven visits, sometimes 12, sometimes 25. You're just going to have to do it week after week after week and be there for them. Don't give up. They might tell you, look, you don't have to come by every week. I understand. I want to list with you when that time comes. Uh, you don't need to come by every week. Don't listen to that. Keep coming by and just say, yeah, you know what? I, I enjoy talking with you and, you know, I'll just drop by and, you know, give you some tips or show you what I was doing this week. And uh, that is what's going to win them over because I, I have had it happen where I listened to somebody and said, okay, all right, I won't, I won't keep dropping by. And then a month goes by and guess what? I see their listing pop up with another agency. What the heck, man? And of course, you're not really able to talk to them. But one time I actually did get to talk with somebody uh, because, well, they called me. They called me up and said, hey, I want to let you know I listed with so-and-so. And I said, you know what? I saw that yesterday. And I was a little disappointed because I thought we had a, a good thing going and, uh, you know, we would be able to work together. And And he just flat out said, well, you know, I know I kind of told you not to drop by, but so-and-so dropped by this last week and they, they just honestly convinced me to, to go ahead and get it on the market. I think the timing was right. And ever since that phone call, I realized, you know, it's the last one standing. Whoever's there last is the one they're going to list with. So you got to keep going by. You got to keep contacting them. All right. Um, so the way this prospecting plan works is you pick three. Once one drops off, meaning that they listed with you, listed with someone else, or they sold themselves, um, sell, sold the home themselves, then you pick up another one. Well, why just three? I recommend starting with three. And if you if you really like for sale by owner prospecting and you want to you know do more of it, great. Add add that to five, uh, maybe up to ten. Ten's a lot though. I'm telling you, ten is a lot. But if that's your main source of prospecting, okay, so be it. But three to five, um, pick a number, though, and stick with it for maybe six months and then see where you are. If you want to add to it, fine. Um, I wouldn't recommend doing just one because it's just all your eggs in one basket. And if that one doesn't, you know, say they you're talking to them for 20 weeks and then they end up selling the house themselves. And you're like, oh, this visible prospecting doesn't work. Aaron's an idiot. Like, Well, you picked one. All right. It's still a numbers game. So you have three of them and you're consistently talking to them, you're going to pick up listings each year from doing that. Okay. Um, the other reason why I adopted this program was because I got very self um, defeating by driving around town and seeing a for sale by owner sign and thinking, Oh my gosh, I got to stop by and talk to that person. And then I, I, I talked to that person and then, you know, on my way home, I see another one like, Oh, I got to stop by and talk to that person. Well, of course, we're all busy and we have other things we have to get to. And so do you stop by and talk to all those people? Typically, no, you don't. Right. And so then I get really upset with myself like, Aaron, oh, you suck. Why aren't you going talking to these for sale by owners? And I realize I'm doing a good job. I'm talking to all the people. I'm doing the program. Right. Um, and so I, I kind of came up with this on my own to say, you know what, Aaron, if you just do this, if you pick three. And I think at that time it was five. But if you pick three and you just go to those three every week, you're doing a good job. Good for you. Pat on the back. Nice job. OK, so that's how I adopted that. And that way, when I pass those other for sale by owners, I didn't feel bad about it because I knew I'm doing the prospecting work that I, I can. As we all know, in reality, there's endless prospecting for for sale by owners, expires. Neighborhood calls, we could call literally 24-7 all day and never possibly catch up. So that's not a realistic expectation. So you got to be nice to yourself. And this was the plan that I put together to help make that happen. Okay. So put this together and uh, that should should help you out. 
Um, now, when you stop by each week, what are you going to give them? What are you going to do? So let me pull out of the PowerPoint here and show you this for sale by owner checklist. I'm going to put this on uh, the email that I send to the office with this training video. But this for sale by owner checklist um, and, and anybody else watching this, you know, feel free to email me at acraft at whitegridunlimited.com. Be happy to get you this uh, checklist. Has the first 10 visits. 10 visits. All right. So your business card for the first visit, second visit, showcasing your home to sell brochure that's in Weikert one residential property disclosure statement, drop off gold services, lender business card. So um, whoever your gold service lender is with us as Kristen Rogers, I right, drop off her business card. The first impressions count uh, that uh, brochure that's from Weikert, um, Weikert, you know, Weikert one, excuse me, uh, digital platform. And it's in the leave behind that we typically give on doors presentations. Same thing for the home appearance checklist. Uh, questions and answers on home inspections. Um, the generic for sale by owner marketing resource center brochure. An open house checklist. Uh, let me guide you through this process. And by the way, I'm, I'm also sending every one of these to you guys as well on the email. Uh, and then other things you can do, other options drop off. Uh, just recently sold homes in the neighborhood, recently listed homes in the neighborhood. Um, but I like having these 10 because these 10 you can put into a little binder and have in your car, the trunk of your car, and you always have them with you. So when you stop by the for sale by owner, you don't have to think about it. You just stop by and you say, hey, all right, I'm on number three with this house. That's a residential property disclosure statement. I reach in and grab the disclosure statement out and I go up to the door. So by having them in your car and in the uh, file, the little Walmart plastic, you know, file drawer thing, I'm trying to think of what to call it, but you know, a little plastic file, uh, portable cabinet you can take with you. Just put that in the trunk of your car and that way you always have it with you. Uh, for me, prospecting isn't hard, but getting myself to prospect and to think, oh, what do I have to do today? That's the hard part for me, or at least the hurdles that get me that stopped me. So um, anyway, that that's what I would recommend you all do. Um, get out there for sale by owners is one of the best prospecting methods that's out there. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video and um, thank you very much.